Welcome to Corpse Club, the official podcast of DailyDead.com. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jonathan James, and I'm joined today by Derek Anderson, Brian Christopher, Scott Drebbit, and special guest, Christy Lee, a.k.a. Creepy Christy. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Super excited. So today's episode topic is all thanks to social media and the recent trend you may have seen on Twitter or Facebook of make me choose between two horror movies. Now, of course, this isn't something that's necessarily new. People have been doing this since before the internet was invented, and I've seen variations of this years back. But what made this stand out for me was I saw Scott posting this to his Twitter account, and he said, make me choose between two horror movies, or posted that image. And it was all about the reply that he got back from Brian. And I said to myself, well, hey, we need to record this, and here we are. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) anyway, so this episode is going to be centered around the idea of make me choose between two horror movies, as I've said. I'm going to go around the room, select a co-host, and they're going to mention two horror movies. And you can either target your pick to the entire group or a specific person, and then the group can answer after. And so, as the phrase may suggest, the individual or the group who's picked, they must pick which horror movie they're going to save. And then, obviously, the movie that you don't pick is immediately erased from your memory, and you can't watch it ever again. So, before we even continue with this episode, I need everyone to swear that they're never going to watch the movie that they don't <laughs> pick, right? We're gonna, I'm going to get that commitment from you all, right? <laughs> I'm all set for the blood oath. Um, when we when we came up with this, I didn't know there were going to be rules. Um, and now, so now I'm panicking because it sounds like <laughs> I have a lot to remember now. Yeah, there's a or lot forget, to remember. As it were. There is. I'm not going to make you never watch it again, but there'll be a little shaming. Um, and then, of course, uh, the person who came up with the two movies, you need to explain your reasoning. Why did you pick them? Are they just out of a hat? Was it randomly? Or do you have uh, do you have a personal vendetta against the person that you targeted? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just I know how you all are, so I don't know what we're going to get hit with. So. You're such a troll. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't say I picked anything against anyone. I didn't target anybody. Um, I know what you're setting up. <laughs> I'm not setting. I'm not setting up anything. <laughs> Did you see the damage that was already done on Twitter from this game. So we're <laughs> going to get started with our podcast edition of Make Me Choose Between Two Horror Movies, and I'm going to have Christy kick us off. So Christy, can you tell us what the two movies are? And is it for the group? Can anyone answer? Or is it for someone in particular? Yeah, so I don't have a vendetta against anyone. So this is going to be for the group. And I have picked Maximum Overdrive or Christine. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Christine for me. That's easy. I don't think, I don't really enjoy Maximum Overdrive. And Christine is John Carpenter, so... That's a that's an easy one for this fellow over here. Yeah, that's it's an interesting one though because it's quality John Carpenter, Stephen King, or coked out of his mind, <laughs> nonsensical Stephen King. Um, mm, yeah, I think I'm still going to lean Christine just because, um, as much as I like Emilio Estevez, I think Keith Gordon is kind of the unsung hero of 80s genre films. Um, and between that and and John Carpenter and a uh, Plymouth Fury, I, I think you can't go wrong. So yeah, I got to go with uh, with Christine on that one. Yeah, this is a tough one because it's too revved up. Stephen King, uh, I guess you could call you could call him a classic in a sense. So, um, I mean, Maximum Overdrive is probably the, the most fun, especially when with the ACDC soundtrack and the vending machine going nuts. And yeah, there's there's some uh, decisions made in that movie, and and the truck design is amazing, but. Because Christine is one of my favorite Stephen King books, I think I have to go with that one uh, because I feel like even though it differs from the novel in some really key ways, I think Carpenter did some just amazing work, especially for the early 80s. Some of the special effects in that are so good, but I love that. That would be a good double feature, though. So I will. That would be my secondary answer is that I would love to watch both of those. So I'm going to be the one breaking from the group. Christine, the 
the book is not precious to me. The movie is not <gasps> precious to me. <laughs> so <Gosh. laughs> I'm going maximum overdrive. I'm going with crazy Stephen King directed Green Goblin driving <laughs> <laughs> mayhem. Um, I've definitely seen maximum overdrive more than Christine and more oh, recently wow. than Christine. So I have no problem ejecting uh, Christine from this list. Wow. You, you heard that quote, people. You heard what he just said. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That, that's, a good, uh, that's a good choice there, though. Yeah. And what, Christy, what made you think of this one? Why'd you pick these two? Well, first off, I just think of vehicles, you know, being murderers, very terrifying. And these two movies in particular really had me when I first saw them. A long time ago. Um, so my favorite is also Maximum Overdrive because I just love how crazy it is. And that probably says a lot about my personality for everyone listening. Um, so there you go. But I think there's something truly terrifying that something, whether it's supernatural or, you know, alien can take over anything electronic and just start going on a murderous rampage. Yeah, that uh, that sounds good to me. And you know, you know what? And going back to Maximum Overdrive, it's it, you know you don't think about it when you think about like post apocalyptic movies or apocalyptic movies, but that totally is one too. So, yeah, you know, it's I know it's it could be because uh, I'm currently an elder, um, so anything I say is going to have that kind of patina on it. But whatever you say, pop up. I, I saw this when I was a teenager, and, and even then, I just I found it too noisy. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's so yeah. noisy. It's like turn it down. Why are you all screaming? Do you have to rev your car that loud for ninety minutes? Please, just bring it down. Bring the noise down a little. Just You're a like, little. Who made who? I be like, I don't care. Just turn it down. <laughs> I don't care who made who. I don't care this if you DC made him. Slash DC. I've never. What is going on here? <laughs> but that has to be one of the best uh, trailers too for a movie, right? Like, do you remember when that trailer yeah. for, came out and it was like, "Holy crap!" Stephen King's directing an adaptation of his own like story. Was that it? That must have just been like a huge deal. No, it wasn't a huge deal. We found it funny, actually, because, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, it was good. It was good huxterism, hilarious. right? Oh, yeah, no, it's great huxterism. And he knew exactly <laughs> what he was making with that. And I, if it's just, the movie becomes just too much, too much for me by uh, too soon into the movie. Um, that's all. But there's some stuff I like in it and. I'm not here to piss on any parades and or public functions. No, it's it's, it's totally okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I, most people I think would pick Christine, so we, we were going against the grain there. Um, but let's uh, let's let's keep it going, Scott. Um, since uh, since you were the last one to talk, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. What are your two movie picks, and are you going to give it to any w one person or the group? I I am giving nothing but love to my fellow corpse clubbers. Um, I'm going to go. I thought let's start at the start or the start ish. And I'm going to pick um, Bella Lugosi's Dracula versus Boris Karloff's uh, Frankenstein. And the reason I thought of these two, I just thought if we're going to be doing um, these movies where we have to sacrifice one to the uh, gods of cinema, <laughs> as it were, then I thought, well, we might as well start with some some big ones and work our way uh, down to more irreverent, you know, um, Jason and space kind of stuff. So <laughs> I thought, let's start at the start and go with the big boys and see who would who we would, uh, you know, um, sacrifice personally myself. I'm keeping Frankenstein and I'm getting rid of Dracula. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm with you on that one, Scott. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with Frankenstein for a few different reasons. Um, I, I think I 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? I align more with the story of kind of the, uh, the, the flawed, but sympathetic monster. Um, and also for just kind of a practical reason, uh, I know when Dracula came out, they hadn't really kind of made full use of sound yet. Um, so like this is one of the first talkies, um, and they hadn't really incorporated music much. So there's a little bit at the beginning and then they don't really use it for the rest of the movie. And there's, there's long stretches where if there had been music in some of those scenes, I think there would have been more of an atmosphere of creepiness. Um, but as is, I think they, for me, tend to drag a little bit. Uh, I think by the time they got to Frankenstein, it was a little bit more implemented. Um, so there was uh, a little bit more of that atmosphere involved. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with you, Scott, and go with Frankenstein. Yeah, and just as a quick aside, I don't think a lot of people know, but – um, whenever there was a bat on screen, because again, with the limitations of sound, it was just Bella Lugosi off camera going, a flappy, 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 flappy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of buried. That's, it's another uh, great ringtone, Scott. Thank you. That was a <laughs> spot on. <laughs> and just, I read a lot about that one. Right. And just for that reason, and it's probably because I will always pick Dracula, but I'm going with Bella on this one. His his emoting in the film to me was just amazing. And yes, it does. It is very, you know, kind of slow at some parts. But I think that's also kind of what captivates me to watch it through his acting in the film. So I would have to stick with Bella's Dracula on this one going against the grain, but. No, I figured I figured that household would be a vampire uh, household. <laughs> yes, <laughs> accurate. You know what, though? No, I'm actually I'm gonna I'm breaking from the pack. I'm actually, and and oh to the surprise God. of Scott and maybe many Corpse Club listeners, because I go uh, vampire all the time, but um, I'm gonna go Frankenstein. He's going against against the grain. Yeah, and it's it's the wow. it's the practical makeup. It's the I think the story is stronger in Frankenstein. Um, Dracula was great. Dracula, you know, opened the door for all of this. But I think Frankenstein and then Bride of Frankenstein really were the game changers. Um, yeah, I, I really I'm I'm sad. I'm I'm crying here. I'm like, Jonathan, what are you saying? Because I'm going to regret this later on. I'm going to write a book like on the original Dracula and somebody's going to be like, well, but I heard in the podcast and you said you'd, you know, get rid of it and erase it from your memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, yeah. you can't watch this anymore. Or the rest of us are going to be listening to this later this week and we're going to wonder why there's this really weird edit chop and then just like this very kind of like monotone Dracula. I choose Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> that could always That's happen. I, yeah, I could change my mind in a couple of days. But no, I think, oh, man. And this is why, in some cases, I knew this this podcast was going to be tough. I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life. But I'm going to pick Frankenstein. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, I'll return us to our senses and say Dracula. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is tough because I do agree that Frankenstein is probably the thing, like one of the things that took that to the next level, the, the whole like universal monsters. But I think Dracula sets the table. I, I'm, I love both of the stories that they're based on too, which also makes this very difficult. But I think Dracula just has a little more of that Gothic atmosphere, a little more, uh, just straight up horror in it. And uh, Frankenstein just always makes me kind of sad because, which is good because that's, I think it's aiming to do, but it's so conflicting and almost hard to watch at times just with that character and how tormented and how em empathetic you are towards that character with Dracula. It's a little more like sit back and watch Bella do his thing. And, and there you go. So that's, I'm going to go with Dracula just because I think I have a little more rewatchability with that one. And I want to hear Scott's flapping noises, too. So that's my other reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. That's Bella, baby. <laughs> Release the flappy cut. And so he should have gotten like a special effects uh, credit on there, too. Totally. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> or sound design. <laughs> Okay, uh, Derek, you're up. Ooh, all right, let me... Uh... Ooh, Halloween Town 1 versus <laughs> Halloween Town 2. 
Don't ruin it, Scott. <laughs> Let me check my notes here. Halloween. Oh, crap. It is all, all Halloween Town. <laughs> well, just for the sake of uh, jumping around, why don't we go? Okay, here we go. Um, so this one is directed at everyone, but I know, Christy, you're a, a Stuart Gordon fan. And so I want to bring up a couple of Stuart Gordon movies here. Uh, Reanimator or From Beyond? Oh, Derek. Of the- <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. I love oh. uh, I love Stuart Gordon and uh, it's a very tough choice for me. But if I had to pick one, I would go with Reanimator. And the reason being, it was one of the first Stuart Gordon movies that I actually just fell in love with from the get go. Um, I think the character development in that movie is amazing. Barbara Crampton is awesome. And she's such a great female lead in that film. Um, And just her bravery, I guess you could say, um, in in shooting some of those scenes just really struck a chord with me, I guess you could say, Um, because she's amazing. (laughs) So, yeah, that's my favorite. And I think it kind of goes into the vein of dealing with death in a certain way. And it kind of hits you, you know, where it's really serious. You know, nobody wants to think about it, but that that's what happens. And it's terrifying. So what would happen if you could be reanimated, but you weren't yourself? So, yeah, that's my pick. That, that's a good reason for it. I mean, that's it's a tough one, too, because it's such like prime Gordon and both of them have Crampton in them. But, yeah, that's that's a really good uh, perspective. I might, I might have to change my answer now. I would hmm. I, I would probably go with Reanimator just and I love them both, but maybe just because of the the humor um, mm. it's just a really, it's one for me, it's one of the funniest, uh, horror films of all time. And it's not funny, knock down, ha ha funny. It's the wonderful kind of, it's the Vincent Price funny that elevated a uh, horror with just a slightly modern, um, you know, take on it. And, uh, I mean, they're both, how dare you, Derek? Um, you know, make uh, <laughs> make us choose between um, these two. But if I have to, slap. if I have to, just barely, I'm going to go uh, Reanimator. Okay, okay. And I'll have to be honest on this one. Um, I have seen two of the three Stuart Gordon Barbara Crampton collaborations. Uh, I have seen Reanimator. I've seen Castle Freak. I have not seen From Beyond, so unfortunately I can't make an informed decision on this one. But that so, makes your choice that much easier. Yeah, exactly. So then it, it, we know what the well, I mean, or you could just say you don't like Reanimator and just <laughs> roll the dice with the other one. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just go with Reanimator just because I know what I'm dealing with there then. I think it's a safe pick. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with Reanimator as well. Um, th- that one's just been closest to me or closer to me. Like I've been watching it since I was little. Um, there's, you know, kind of like, you know, more so than than things like Return the Return of the Living Dead. This is more like Evil Dead in that it mixes comedy and horror in such a great way. Um, and that often didn't go together before, uh, like I said, before movies like this and Evil Dead too. So. Um, this one definitely like far and away would be my pick. All right. Well, I'll be that guy then. And I'll say from beyond only for the four E factor, which ties back into Nickelodeon, oddly enough, uh, because Ken four E from the original Dawn of the dead played the dad in Keenan and Kel. So to go back and watch him in a really like mind melting horror movie, like from beyond, uh, that, that kind of made my day. So, I will, I'll go, I'll say from beyond just for that reason and tie it back to some, uh, nineties Nickelodeon just for, uh, (laughs) old time's sake. (laughs) It always comes back, (laughs) but 
very good answers. Though. I like that. That's that would also be a good double feature, but n- only uh, I guess I can never watch Reanimator now. So there yep. goes that. Never I can again. Watch Castle Freak though. Yeah, I can still watch Castle Freak. Okay, Brian, you're up. Oh man, I've been drooling. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't have any vendettas, but I'm just a heartless bastard. And <laughs> Scott <laughs> thought he could it's tear true. off that Band-Aid uh, via Twitter, uh, but now I'm going to make him explain himself. And oh, no. this one is directed at you, Scott. Uh, burnt offerings uh, are fantastic. Burnt does well, yeah. oh. This is Brian's... Uh, this is a, the Kobarashi Maru that he cheated on to, to beat. <laughs> Um, because of course it's my weakness, right? That's the, the two of my, of my big three, which is, uh, burnt offerings, phantasm and, and Halloween. Um, but I, I think I went on, on Twitter. I went with burnt offerings, didn't I? Yes. And you also, uh, that is correct. You wrote uh, Brian out of your will as well. That's right. He's getting none of my, uh, (laughs) Blu-rays. So why did I pick, uh, burnt offerings over phantasm? I picked it because burnt offerings was my first, uh, horror movie, first horror movie that I saw in the theater. Um, so simply for that reason Mm. alone, because I can't, I have to have some kind of uh, quantifier in there. And for the life of me, I, you know, couldn't think of anything other than, well, it was, um, the first in terms of quality and, and location of shooting. I'm anything if a thrifty, um, uh, set, uh, set person, since they're both take place at the same mansion. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go with burnt offerings because, it was my, it was the door opening into horror for me. A valid pick, sir. Yeah, that's a, so d- d- I guess I'll just say, uh, I'll, I'll say phantasm after that, <laughs> but, but I respect your decision, Scott. That's no wrong answers, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Especially this, here. Yeah, the tall man. I mean, the ice cream truck need I go on, but <laughs> But I will say Burn Offerings does have that really creepy scene with uh, the driver, which yeah. is, uh, yeah. The chauffeur, Anthony the James. Chauffeur. Yeah. So that, I don't know, they're both very creepy, like get under your skin in ways you don't really expect. Uh, but Phantasm I, is the one that I'm a little more familiar with or have seen more. So I, I for that reason, I'll, I'll go Phantasm. Yeah, I'll follow up on that. Um You know, I I credit Scott with introducing me to Burnt Offerings, uh, and it's one that I probably wouldn't have ever sought out on my own and really, really loved. Um, You know, uh, Oliver Reed is just on another level in that movie. (laughs) Um, But Phantasm is just so deeply rooted in my psyche. You know, it's been a movie that I've loved ever since I was a kid, and it's one that just will, you know, I'll carry that to my grave as just one of the loves of my life when it comes to the horror genre. So I, I got to go phantasm. Yeah. I'm going to have to agree with Derek and Brian um, phantasm just because it's the one that I've seen, you know, it's stuck in my head more and I don't know what was ever more terrifying than being in a funeral home and seeing the mortician or funeral home director. It's just generically terrifying to me. Um, so the fact that Angus Grimm plays that character so well, it just shakes you to the core. So I'm going to stick with Phantasm. And I'll kind of just say ditto to everybody's phantasm, <laughs> you know, but, but it oh, is, no. but to Scott's, <laughs> St- Scott's credit though, like burnt offerings, wasn't a movie that I really went back to. And now I have a lot of respect for it. And, you know, it was one of those things too, because I don't know when we were talking you, that you didn't like the shining, the, the movie that much. We all know that now, but watching burnt mm. offerings, I understand now why, if you really liked burnt offerings and if you saw it before the shining, why you wouldn't like the shining as much. So like mm. I said, I, I do, uh, I do understand and respect your decision. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> much respect. Now you're off the show, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, it's my turn, and uh, I'm going vampires. I might have might have gotten rid of Dracula. You know, 
maybe I should have kept it <laughs> just so that I could have led into this with a little respect and credibility. But uh, I'm going to go with The Lost Boys and oh. Fright Night. Oh, yeah, that man. was that was one that I saw pop up um, a lot on Twitter, too, was Lost Boys uh, Fright Night. Personally, myself, I chose uh, Fright Night over Lost Boys and I love Lost Boys. Oh, the agony. <laughs> but I went, but 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 I went with that because um, I think what Fright Night does is it pays. If you're a big Hammer horror fan, it pays a lot of respect and and homage to to Hammer in its in its presentation. Um, and I just love the script and I love the way it's directed and acted. So, Lost Boys is um, one of the best popcorn movies of all time without a doubt but i i just i love what fright night pulls off just a little bit more so i'm gonna have to go with the i'm gonna have to go in the lost boys direction um i i will admit that fright night is one that it's usually one that people talk about being kind of their entryway into horror uh it's it's one that a lot of people especially you know in, in our generation grew up with i didn't for whatever reason and i got it later in life and i thought it was really good but i just it didn't grab me the way that i think it's it's kind of taken root for other people uh the lost boys however just everything about that um just evokes everything from my childhood so like Corey Haim, Kiefer sutherland jamie gertz um it's just it's funny it is kind of like glamorously gory with you know the kind of the the glitter and the blood that's just something that only joel schumacher would do um and it's just pitch perfect for a 1987 vampire movie uh so it's one that you know it's another one that i, I will always love and uh yeah I, I think when it comes to vampire movies uh it's going to be hard to find one if you go head to head uh that's going to beat out the lost boys for me i do love lost boys and i will say 1987 was a fabulous year so there's that I do have to pick Fright Night in this case. Um, a lot of the reasoning goes along with what Scott has said. Um, I love Hammer films, and I think they do a really great job of bringing in some elements um, from some Hammer films. And also, who doesn't love Chris Sarandon? So there's that as well. So I'm going to go with Fright Night, even though I love you, Lost Boys. That's all right. Come, you come stand over here with me, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> Are we do. playing dodgeball? <laughs> Was this kickball all over again? I'm going to be Pick picked last. <laughs> okay, well, I don't really have a choice here since Lost Boys is my favorite movie. Come to I've me, played. Derek. Come so to me. So I'm I'm going over there with Brian under the boardwalk in the in the shadows of the boardwalk. You go over uh, to Star there, Derek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two words, Tim. Capello. Scott and I hey, are going to be at a it. dance party. <laughs> That's right. And it is a very, it's a very eighties movie. It's so eighties. In fact, that the thought of them remaking it or doing a, like a new TV series on it almost seems like impossible to me because I feel like the eighties is just intertwined in the movie's DNA. Uh, but yeah, there's just so much I love about it. And I think that cast is top to bottom, just, Freaking amazing and the one liners and and I love Fright Night as well. I mean, I love Evil Ed. I think Fright Night did obviously is part of that trifecta of the near dark uh, Lost Boys um, Fright Night, like trifecta of 80s vampire movies. But for me, it's the Lost Boys just for the style and that the late Joel Schumacher put in there is just it's amazing what they pulled off at that. And it's such a great summer movie, too. I feel like it's the ultimate like beach summer movie, just even without the horror elements. I just love that whole setting. I still believe. I still believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, though, I'm going to break this tie, even though it was my pick. And I'm going to go I over to uh, to Fright Night. Yeah. Dude. Uh, Fright Night's a better movie. <laughs> the suburbs over the beach? Are you kidding it's, it's me? A, it's a vampire <laughs> version of Rear Window. With a character named Peter Vincent, <laughs> it's no, it's it's great. I, I love it. Um, you know, and obviously one of Heather's favorite movies of all time, if not favorite movie of all time. 
Um, definitely go to Daily Dead. We have a bunch of retros. We have a free issue of our, our old magazine, Deadly. Yeah. It just dives into this. So <laughs> that's, that's that's the issue. Heather writes every article in that issue on Friday night. She <laughs> yeah. just like, get out of my way. Yeah, it was, it was her tribute. <laughs> it's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, so that settles that. It's it's Fright Night. Lost Boys is gone to the world forever. I didn't let you know about that part. No, it's gone to you three forever. Hey. No, you this is like, you this can't like one of those rules. You can't this, shift rules now. No, we'll go back to the tape. You three forget about it while Derek and I just get to revel right. in it for the rest of our lives. What you and guys we, missed, this is like Tales from the Crypt or one of those Amicus anthology movies. There was just a little <laughs> whisper that was going. <laughs> and in that was all the the terms that you signed. OK, <laughs> and that was it. This is gone forever. It's it's for all of us. John, Brian, just, remember, just remember, I've got some choices I still have to put out there. So choose your words wisely, Jonathan. I feel comfortable <laughs> with my decisions today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, that's all right. We still got Lost Boys, the tribe, Brian. It's good. Oh, man. I'm so <laughs> sad now. <laughs> Why did you say that, Derek? <laughs> I'm just saying the story lives on, man. <laughs> okay. We're circling back. It's now Christie's pick. What are your two movies? All right. So this one's really directed towards you, Derek. Um, however, mm -hmm. I would like to hear everyone's take on this. So it's going to be between Hocus Pocus. That's right. I said it. Oh. Hocus Pocus or Night of the Creeps. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Derek's going to explode here. Oh, my gosh. OK. Yeah, these are <laughs> two of my all time favorite movies. <laughs> no pressure. Um, either way, I'm going to let down. Half of my uh, childhood heroes. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Well, mm. Atkins or Bette Midler? I mean, whoever thought I'd have to decide which one to axe. Oh, <laughs> nobody ever thought you'd have to choose. I don't, oh, I don't know which one. Okay. I wish it was Miller time, but I've got to go with Hocus Pocus for the, the main reason being that I've seen it probably more than any other movie <laughs> because I've watched it countless times every year on like ABC family and which is now free form. And it is pure Disney Halloween magic, even though it was released in July for some reason uh, in theaters, but I would, I got to go hocus pocus, even though it kills me because I Tom Atkins, I had just a great experience interviewing him at Crypticon one year and I got a free t-shirt with his face on it. But I still got to stab him in the back and, and uh, embrace uh, the witches of Salem and say Hocus Pocus because there's a talking cat. You've got just the magic of Halloween night. And mm, yeah, you got a spell on me. I got I to gotta go with it. I'm sorry. I'm like, what was that little grunt there? That mm. I almost spit. I almost spit out. I was drinking my tea. I literally almost spit it out of my nose. Jimmy. <laughs> I know. It's it's hard. It's really hard. It's like Derek, you're not doing reaction. yourself any favors, buddy. <laughs> Banks has your heart. Mm. Um, yes, Banks does. Derek, I can't believe I'm going to do this. Like, Teenage B would be so upset to hear that when, if given the choice between a Fred Decker 80s horror movie and an early 90s Disney movie, I'm going to go with the early 90s Disney movie and I'm going to go with Hocus Pocus. I can't believe I'm doing this, but it's... Yes. What? And yes. this is another one that like I never watched as a kid because like I wouldn't... I was that idiot who like wouldn't be caught dead watching a Disney movie when I was like in, you know, a, a childhood or, or early teens. But like so my wife loves Disney movies and she has dragged me kicking and screaming into kind of that world. But now that I'm here, I kind of really enjoy it. And as silly as Hocus Pocus is and as annoying as the male lead is in that movie, like I really just want to smack that kid. Oh, but he's going <laughs> <laughs> He's from uh, Matinee in Erie, Indiana. <laughs> oh, well, if that's the case, then I want to move in with him. He sounds like the best <laughs> guy in the world. But no, just mm. like other than him, it, it's so corny, but it's so much fun. And it's it's one that has made its way into like my annual Halloween tradition. And, and I can't say that for Night of the Creeps. So, yeah, I, I got to go Hocus Pocus. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 
Awesome. Come on over. <laughs> Red Rover, come on over. Yeah, yeah. Do, do we have to grunt the whole time while I'm over there? Or? I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stick with Night of the Creeps. Uh, thank you. I think it deserves the representation and the non-erasure from your guys' horror history. Like, <sighs> whatever. Yeah, I'm going Night of the Creeps. <laughs> <laughs> Way to make us feel good about it. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I don't know Alien about this sucks. one. I didn't think that this was going to be the toughest one for me right now. It, Frankenstein and Dracula was easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm going Hocus Pocus. Oh, I'm going, what is going I'm, on I'm, here? I'm going with my heart, Scott. I'm going am with my I, heart. Scott, am I taking crazy pills here? <laughs> yeah, I don't... I mean, I'm going... You know what? It is because it's a, it's a family thing, and that's what it comes down to. We're not taking... It's not necessarily the best movie. It's like the movies you would take with you on an island. And um, on my Halloween island, it's, it's been a tradition to watch Hocus Pocus. A lot of people in my family like it. My brother and sister were terrified of it. It gave them nightmares. They thought the sisters were going to come after them for like years after seeing it the first time. So there's I'm not I'm not knocking Hocus Pocus. I'm just saying Night of the Creeps. Christy. I'm surprised. Christy, come on. <laughs> yes, Scott. Right? <laughs> Night of the Creeps? Or um, you Hocus You brought it up. Oh, boy. I know. I got myself in trouble. I love Tom Atkins. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong. That man is amazing. Oh, oh no. no. Whenever someone says, don't get <laughs> me wrong. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Focus, focus. I will, because you know what? Every time I watch that movie, and maybe I'm just a sucker for a sappy Halloween Disney movie, but I cry at the end. Okay. So I have to go with Hocus Pocus. It's just got a special place in my heart. All right. Well, you guys have to let me watch Night of the Creeps one more time before I can't watch it anymore. You get to keep that's, it. No, no. We said that's the new thing. It's gone forever. No. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, the stakes a little higher now, Christy, huh? You rethinking it? <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. You can't watch it ever again. You can't hear Tom Atkins say, thrill me. Ever again. Oh, well, Chris, man. Christy, if it makes you feel any better, um, you would still get outvoted three to two. So it's going away anyway. So just vote with your heart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's you know Disney. what? That's that. I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up, Brian. Thanks. <laughs> it's Disney no, no. plus four. You guys go off to your island and sit there and all grunt and groan and oh, Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> <laughs> ah. No, it's Doug Jones. Doug Jones. Oh, yeah. It's Doug Doug Jones. Jones. It's an amazing cast. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Scott, we are back to you. Well, you mentioned Amicus, and I thought here's a little fun one, and this will be for anyone, of course, is uh, let's go Amicus Anthology. Are we going to go with Asylum or Tales from the Crypt? The original Tales from the Crypt movie. Oh, that's another tough one. And it shouldn't be as tough, but I've been watching Asylum a lot lately. That little robot guy at the end <laughs> mm, is really Oh, great. God. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that was the clincher. I forgot about him. Asylum. Just. Yeah. No, it's Asylum. <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh, oh, I. No, it's. I, I mean, I only went back and forth a little bit because. Asylum's really gone up on my list lately. It's the original Tales from the Crypt. It didn't necessarily kick this off for Amicus, but we wouldn't have the TV show necessarily without it. The um, and the, the Peter Cushing segment. It just there's very few that get me. There's very few. Um, excuse me. There's very few segments, let, let alone or, or movies that get me like emotional. Like that one to me is really like like gut wrenching. Like watching yeah. what they do to him in that one. Yeah. And it's I mean. Yeah, that one, uh, that segment in particular is crazy. But you have the, you have the Christmas one, you have the uh, the monkey's paw. There's there's too many there's too many good segments. This is this is an all time uh, anthology for me. So it, it definitely wins it. Thank you. I'm a with I'm with you on that. Although Asylum is is great, and, and it's nice to see Asylum uh, since it was re released on Blu Ray a couple years ago. Get. Uh, the attention that it deserves because it, it was never really talked about. It was always uh, Tales from the Crypt or Creep Show 
uh, that were talked about really in in uh, anthologies. So it's nice that it's getting uh, a lot more love these days. Yeah, and it's available on some different streaming services. I've seen it on uh, Amazon Prime, so that's why I've been watching it a lot more lately. So for anybody who hasn't seen it, uh, now's the time. And Tales from the Crypt has that uh, uber creepy Santa segment, so it's good around the holidays. And I've never seen Asylum, so I guess I'm going to Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> <laughs> Makes that job easier. See, I, I should do this more often. Yeah, um, Scott, oh. I hope I redeem myself in your eyes um, because I'm picking Tales from the Crypt, and I love Peter Cushing. He's my favorite. So nice. I, I hope that redeems my choice. You, of you had no redemption to redeem. You were all redeemed, <laughs> fully redeemed. Unre- you had a lot of redeem, <laughs> and you I just have the be- same amount of redeem. I just want to be perfectly before. clear. She was, you were just about to say unredeemable. Oh, well, because I'm trying to say. <laughs> I heard it too. <laughs> yeah, unredeemable, but that just means she can't return any redeem because she's full of. I didn't redeem. lose any. You I didn't see. lose any redeem. Right. She's at max redeem. Right. Yes. Very good. Nice recovery, Scott. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> that's the truth. Chris Unreturnable staff. redeemability. <laughs> <laughs> your your redeems are no good here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Unredemptionable. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on, Derek, you are uh, you're up. What are your picks? Well, it's time to turn the tables here and give uh the dynamic duo of Brian and Scott something to sweat about. So I've Turn got a the couple. tables. What did we ever do to you? Like, <laughs> now it's getting vindictive. Well. <laughs> this has vendetta written all over it, but I'm not sure what we did. I haven't been waiting for this moment for years at all. No. Um, so uh, I've got a couple of titles here and everyone can, of course, answer. But I want to see what you guys are going to say. You have to choose between Kingdom of the Spiders okay. or. Or. Yeah. Night of the Lepus. Oh, Kingdom of the Spiders. Kingdom of the Spiders. Yeah, that's not even close. Oh, yeah. Kingdom of the Spiders. Kingdom of the Spiders. What the hell? Night of the Lepus is fun in terms of the premise, and it's it's one that would actually be better for, like, I would love to see a montage of that movie. The movie the whole way through wears out its welcome probably within, what, Scott, 30 to 35 minutes? Yeah, I mean, I liked it enough because of the premise and everything. I I did a dust off on it, and and it's a fun movie. But compared to Kingdom of the Spiders, which is a great B movie, um, there's really they're they're like night and day. Yeah, we did a uh, we did a bonus commentary on Night of the Lepus, and I we think sure did. Ninety like eighty percent of the the second half of the movie is us going, oh look, rabbits running down a model set. <laughs> <laughs> Well, shoot, I thought that was going to be way more difficult for you. I guess only one has William Shatner in it, so. There you see, there's your answer. Uh, yep, that's it. It's all about the your vendetta. Dang it. Wow, you, were, you, were really pumped. <laughs> you were really pumped for that. <laughs> <laughs> this will change the course of podcast history. Goo. <laughs> 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 Oh, I was going to have like a, what was it, Flame and Mo uh, revelation there. The secret ingredient is cop syrup. <laughs> well, I'll come up with something else. I'll figure out. I'll figure this out. Give me some time. We, we got time. <laughs> Brian, you're up. All right. So I would like to uh, uh, tweak the, the format just a teensy bit. And I'm going to go with a trilogy because it's going to be George Romero's original Living Dead trilogy or Dead trilogy. So Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead or Day of the Dead. Oh, this is for anyone. mm, I knew someone was going to do this. So it's a pick one situation. Yep. One stays, two goes. You know what? I, I can probably watch Dawn of the Dead more than the other two, just in terms of going back. Uh, to it again. Um, so I'm going to go Dawn. And I'm, I'm with you on that one, Scott. Um, I, 
I really love Night of the Living Dead, especially in terms of what it represents for the genre. Um, but there are just some <clears throat> some dry patches in there a little bit where they really lean on a lot of exposition heavy dialogue. Um, and Day of the Dead, I'll be honest, like I know that's been getting kind of a resurgence lately, but um, I, I, I've only seen it once and I really just didn't get into its frequency. Um, now, I'll admit the same thing happened with Dawn of the Dead and uh, it was kind of one of those things where it's such a quirky movie where kind of the the the, the music is at first a little jarring because it's not what you'd expect from kind of a, a heavy zombie movie. There's a lot more of a playful tone to it uh, right up until there isn't. Um, and it's kind of one, just one of those things where like it's – you got to get on its wavelength. And it took me a few times to do that for Dawn of the Dead. For Day of the Dead, it, I, it might be something where I could do that. But I feel like I, I put so much effort into getting on Dawn of the Dead's wavelength. I don't really feel like doing that for Day. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to stick with Dawn. You know what? I And I hate to be that guy, but I guess it's my, you know, t- uh, task in life. But so much yelling. Why Why? Why are we yelling so much? Most of it coming of from – uh, from roads. Yes, there's so with the yelling. Now, on the other yeah. hand, uh, Day of the Dead's effects are some of the best hand down that have ever been done. True. Um, I, uh, you know, Savini's p- pinnacle for me, I think, in terms in, in that particular um, arena. But I, I find it a very talky movie um, that just kind of wears me down by the end of it um but it's a movie i still admire and i think there's a lot of good craft in it and but of those three movies yeah that that would be because it's essentially a ranking list right we might as well rank them while we're um i would go dawn night and uh and then day it's not about ranking them it's about knowing that the other two will never exist after this podcast (laughs) I'm trying to make it more palatable to my brain so I, you know, I don't. Yeah, I, I can't. I mean, I, I can pick this. This is a tough one, but it's it's going to be Night of the Living Dead. It, it has to be. This was the first one. This is this started it all. Um, this yeah. definitely is, is, is my pick. And I, I can understand why you'd say Dawn, because for me, actually, I think Dawn might be more rewatchable. There's a, a lightness to that movie that there isn't in Night of the Living Dead. Um, I still might have, I still think I've seen night more and day. I really love day of the dead. So maybe we'll have to do an episode or, or maybe I'll have to force Brian to watch it again, but no, it's, it sounds like you're up for it. So I don't even think I'll have to force you, but um, definitely mm. worth a, a revisit there, especially these but, days. But no, Jonathan, cause no one's picking it. So it's not going to exist after this episode. These are I'm, your rules, sir. Your I'm trying rules. to convince everyone to change their vote. See, <laughs> this is like Avengers where like half of these movies just disappear and we don't even remember well, I guess we would remember, but no, it gets removed from your memory <laughs> at midnight. That's the other part of the rule you didn't hear. Yeah. Oh, so this is like removed a matrix thing midnight. too. Man, this yeah. subliminal fine print sucks. It's, it's really terrible. Uh, but okay. I could just listen to this episode and then I'll know again. <laughs> no, the weird thing about this is every time we're talking about it, you'll be like, uh-huh. "What are these new movies?" And then you try to search them, and they're not there. What is Night of the Creeps? And then you go to IMDb, and it's gone. <laughs> oh, that's just creepy. Terrifying. It, mm. I would I would have to agree with you, Jonathan. I would say out of those three, Night of the Living Dead, and because to me it is the creepiest of the three, it's genuinely unsettling on so many levels. I think the whole farmhouse setting is super isolated, and I, I kind of prefer that to the mall and the bunker even though all three are isolated in their own ways. Uh, but Night of the Living Dead, like no one knows what the hell is going on. And I know there's that initial confusion in Dawn of the Dead, but uh, for most of the movie, you're kind of living in this world where, okay, they know these are, they know what the zombies are. They know how to handle them. And 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 I do love Dawn of the Dead and, and Day of the Dead. But for me, Night of the Living Dead is just like the confusion of it and the hodgepodge characters that are thrown together. I feel like it moves the quickest and, and Dawn of the dead, the original kind of like just the whole hanging out in the mall kind of drags on a little bit for me, even though it's all enjoyable. And I love the furry factor in that one as well. But to me, neither living dead and Dwayne Jones and just that whole cast, like it just, 
it really it, it's honestly like one of the most important movies ever made. So for that reason, I'm just gonna have to go with Night, even though it kind of hurts me to say that over Don. But and and Day, of course, has Bub. And I think, like you said, Brian, Day has gotten a lot more recognition recently. But to me, it probably goes Night, Don and then Day. So, Jonathan, if we all remember talking about a certain movie and we talk to each other after and we all remember the movie, but the movie doesn't exist. Did the movie exist or are we all as a collective insane? It starts, it starts <laughs> yes. to fade away over time. Like you just remember it like it was a dream and you only remember flashes of your favorite movie and they start to go away. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say he's making this up as he goes along. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before Christy j- jumps into this, though, we have to remember that we are, we're, we're even tied, right? We, we're, we're tied. It's, oh, yeah. Two, two oh, dawns and two nights. Yeah. First so one of these is... movies is going away. Oh. Oh, I'm about to ruin things for someone. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm going to go with Night because... Like everyone else has said, the original, it touches on some really amazing things that weren't being done at that time. And I find myself going back to that one more than the other two. Um, After that, I would pick Day and then Dawn. Well, it doesn't so, matter because you've so killed speaking, both of them. So. <laughs> and so speaking of dead, you're dead to me now. So, oh, no. oh my. Oh, there went my redemption quality. <laughs> Not for me. That's Brian talking. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just bringing up the redemption thing again. You're you're overflowing with <laughs> redeems over here. So I love I'll it. Just, Thank you. I'll just be over here holding Scott. And while we try desperately to hang on to our memories of Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> That's all you can do. What about my physical mm-hmm. copy of it? Poof. Jonathan. Oh, no, that, that starts to disappear. It's like Back to the Future. Come on. It's like the disappearing hand. <laughs> okay. I got the, okay. I have all of this covered. <laughs> <laughs> Millions of people will be affected now. by this. <laughs> No. I don't want this to happen. I really don't. <laughs> Pick wisely, people. Pick wisely. <laughs> Pick very wisely. So reckless we are. Yes. Okay. Another one. Bimbly throwing out hocus pocus. <laughs> <laughs> this Scott, next what else one. is ABC Family going to play? <laughs> I can't do Overnight that. Overnight of the creeps. I just. <laughs> <laughs> you had respect for us. What is no life? More. I don't know. <laughs> This may be the episode that ends the podcast. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. I think uh, it was worth it. I think so. <laughs> the donut inside the donut. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, my picks are between Cronenberg's The Fly and Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, my goodness. It's for anybody. You went the remake route, didn't you? So oh, that's, that one's easy for me, The Fly. Also easy for me, The Thing. And I'm saying the thing as well. Okay, Christy. <laughs> We're doing I'm rapid so fire sorry, apparently Scott. this round. <laughs> That's okay. No explanation. Just I know the fly's <laughs> going down. I okay. know. I got to go with the thing. You know, it's the thing about the thing. It just there's something about it. So. <laughs> That's a, Jonathan. Uh, it's tough, though. Those are two groundbreaking remakes. Yeah, and I will say I I love The Fly, but I love The Thing just as much as I love The Fly, I love The Thing significantly more. It's just one of my all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, don't break Scott's heart, please. I know. I mean, it doesn't matter because it's gone anyway, (laughs) isn't it? Right? It's gone anyway. Oh, that's another telltale (laughs) sign. All right. Bye-bye, Fly. It's it's gone anyway. (laughs) Adios, Fly. (laughs) See a bundle. Scott, Scott, look at look at the pretty rabbits, Scott. Yeah. Look at the rabbits. No, yeah. you can't look at the rabbits because he voted out and I the leap is. <laughs> Just look at the flowers. <laughs> the repercussions are endless. What have we done? He raced a Cronenberg. We did. Mm, it's a brutal sport. This is this it's is a, this is brutal. And it's two amazing special effects showcases, too. But the thing did come first, so. Wait, was, did we, just, was, I'm did a sucker for a love story, away? so. Did we let Jonathan get away without actually making a choice? No, I made the choice. It's a thing. 
Oh, okay. yeah, I, would, I <laughs> yeah. didn't even need to hear it. I, I knew we were building up to it, but I just wanted to make sure. Wait, are you saying McCready wasn't in love with that bottle? There's a love story to be found there. Oh, that's true. I'm just saying <laughs> capital L, capital S, love story in the fly. But whatever, it's gone. And, and uh, Mr. Cronenberg has other uh, fine films that I can watch instead. And so. you still have Vincent Price's The Fly. You do. You got the original. That's true. That's true. That's true. It's a glass half That's full. not a total loss. <laughs> Which brings me to my next pick. Uh, Vincent Price is the fly or the thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you monster. <laughs> okay, I think we'll be fly. the last movie standing of all time. <laughs> well, we're circling back, and uh, now it's Christy's turn. All right. This one is clearly directed toward Jonathan, and <laughs> it may wreck his entire life oh, um, sweet. So, oh man i had one of those too i'll be oh, interested to hear the same one let's see um so it is gonna be choosing the shining or creep show mm-hmm. oh i've got another one to ruin his day with later <laughs> <laughs> that one is kind of that one is tough um <sighs> what would i get rid of forever Take your time. I'm just trying to make sure. I think I've already made my decision. I'm just trying to make sure that I can live with this. I mean, I'm I'm going. I'm definitely going with Creep Show. Had a boy. <laughs> it's, Had a it, you. I, I love the anthology format. This is taking EC Comics and just you know and just throwing it all at the screen, including you know some of those you know those splash pages and vivid colors and. And uh, and borders from the comics. It's it knows what it is, which is a, a little bit of uh, you know horror and a little bit of comedy and a little bit of craziness. And uh, some of the best acting and probably the best cast we've seen in an anthology film. Um, you know, from from two masters of horror. Um, it, it's hands down creep show. Creep show is is at least at the moment it's the unbeatable anthology film. Okay, um, so what you're saying is, is we have a chance here to erase The Shining from film history. That's what I'm saying. Let's go. It's two. It's two for the for Creep Show. Yeah, that's oh my a gosh. three. Three for Creep Show. <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you know, monsters. I I have to think about this one. You know, a lot of these, it's kind of like it's it's basically a fun way of saying which movie do you like better. Um, but for this one, I really need to think about this one literally because I like both of these movies. But if I have to get rid of one and I can only watch one for the rest of time, in this case, I need to go with one that's going to give me some variety, which in this case is going to be the anthology. You know, I, I really I do enjoy The Shining. I like it a lot. Um, it's two and a half hours of kind of the same feeling throughout. Uh, so if I'm going to have to repeat watch something, I think I'm going to have to go creep show uh, just because I get a nice mix of everything with that one. Okay. So what? this leaves me alone in the overlook. <laughs> That's, <laughs> fitting. Gotta... That's fitting. Yeah, exactly. You, you've got Tony <laughs> with you. It's fun. Yeah, I'm going the shining because strangely, I've seen that one more. Because even though Creepshow is probably definitely the more, I guess, rewatchable one and the shorter one. And I love the atmosphere of Creepshow, but The Shining, I did not watch Burn Offerings before The Shining. So The Shining was uh, pretty terrifying in a lot of ways, even though I think the book is actually even creepier. And I, act- I kind of wish I get why King Stephen King was a little irked at some of the choices that Kubrick made and the casting of Jack Nicholson. And I, I get all of that, but it's just so damn weird. And it's just so such an endless kind of hallway of terror that I will go with the shining, uh, just to be that guy. And, uh, as far as I know, the creep show doesn't have, uh, the bear suit in it. So I guess we'll just go with that. I just want to see Derek tool around the overlook on a Hot Wheels, a giant Hot Wheels now. <laughs> up and down the hallway. That's all I want to see now. The, well, my uh, hair's long enough for it, so. The creepy naked witch comes out to attack him and he doesn't even see her. He just runs over her foot. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Oblivious. Uh, I'm no Danny Torrance. I'll be, 
It'll be like more like it'll be more like the Simpsons shining episode or the shinning. <laughs> the shinning. You want to get sued? <laughs> Where you're just oblivious to all the horrible things happening. <laughs> oh, we still get that, right? You can't touch the treehouse of horror. Yeah, but like what would they be parodying? If, no. if, if the movie doesn't exist. Yeah, they sorry, could, Derek. They could still they could actually say the shining then. It's, it's a butterfly effect. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the shining, but it wouldn't be funny because they wouldn't be referencing anything. Oh, <laughs> rule 33 point A. Exactly. Into like Final Destination. Or this something. is like it's like Jesus. Doctor Who. You know, it's very confusing, but I have an explanation. It's got his rule book on an etch sketch. Airtight. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Scott, you're up. Well, let's get a little bit exorcisty, I think. And I've seen a lot of debate on the line uh, recently about these two movies. So I will go. This is for anyone. Exorcist or exorcist three i'm three. um i'm original brian's three why three brian oh i just watched this for the first time this year and you know i'd heard a lot of good things about it for whatever reason um i didn't think it was going to do it for me um i was very wrong um every single scene that george c scott does with brad dorif slash jason miller is just on another level for me. It is just so compelling and it is so creepy. Uh, and that's not even to get into some of the more kind of the, the classic scenes in that, you know, the big jump scare with the, uh, the nurse and the, uh, the gigantic garden shears, uh, the, the scene with the family, um, you know, that those are all great, but just those, those scenes with Brad Dorif are just worth the price of admission alone. And it's uh, definitely one that I know I'm going to be going back to a lot in the future. And I, and I also say that to say, like, I love the original exorcist. I really appreciate what it's doing. Um, you know, particularly the buildup of the supernatural stuff where they're trying to figure out, first of all, like what might be a medical reason, because in a situation like this, that's probably what's going to happen. They're going to try and figure out some logical reason about what's going on. Um, so I, I love what that movie is doing, but just in terms of like gut visceral enjoyment, uh, it's definitely part three for me. I think for me, it's, the original and I'm a sucker for originals, especially when they're like the exorcist and dealing with such serious subject matter, I guess you could say. Um, so again, it's one of those that terrified me to the core and I love, um, Brad Dorif's acting in three. It's amazing. You can't beat that. Um, but I have to go with the original for sure. And I'm going to also go with the original, although, Scott, for a second there, I thought you said the heretic as the second option. Oh, the heretic? <laughs> or the heretic. Here we go. Uh, and then I, I heard Brian jump in quickly with that option. And then so I, I had to completely like wrap my brain around that for a second. But I will <laughs> say uh, for me, it's it's the original. Uh, kind of, like Christy was saying, I mean, that there's just something so powerful about that movie and why I, I believe it was like the director's cut that I watched uh, for the first time. Uh, probably, I guess it was already fi five or six years ago, but just the characters in that are so good. Like even without the uh, possession element, like the characters are so fascinating. And, and I, I think there's definitely elements of that in the third one as well. And there's probably one of the most iconic like jump scares in that movie too. But it, for the original to be as groundbreaking and influential and kind of paving the way for horror to go to the places it would be allowed to go on the big screen and in, in the years to come and to, to get people to take horror seriously, whether they liked it or not, whether they were suspecting what they were going to see when that movie came out, I think is this such a great pop culture moment in his, in a uh, movie history. And I, I feel like even like years later, people who are, you know, people who saw it as kids. Now they you hear them tell those stories about like people lining up outside the theater and seeing it too young. And it's just like, I love hearing those stories because it, it takes you back to that moment in time, which I think is something that's really special. And, and I feel like the third one is getting its due now, but it didn't have that same like pop culture effect that the first one did. So for that reason, I'm going to go with the first one. 
Kind of ditto for what Derek said. Um, I really like three, and but but there's there's no contest. I mean, three's three's good. If you're listening to this and you haven't seen The Exorcist three, like wa- watch it immediately. It's great. And um, not a lot of people talked about it when it first came out. It didn't do well. People didn't get it, or they were expecting it to be um, very much like the first one. It was it was it was you know also it was you know marketing it against. It, it's hard to compare it to one of the greatest scariest movies of all time. Um, in my opinion. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely the first one. I'll just be standing here on the, uh, the shoreline staring off into the horizon for the last few minutes of having part three in my memory, <laughs> confident in my, in my love for this movie. It was short lived, but better to love and lost than never to have loved it all. Exactly. Well said. Mm. Okay. Derek. All right. Well, I think I'm going to take us to the 90s and I've got a a fun double feature that we're going to have to whittle down here. It's another, I guess you would call it Mother Nature themed double feature, but it's in the 90s this time. We're going to have to choose between and this is kind of at anyone since I don't I don't know offhand if anyone is super attached to either of these movies. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out. Um, (laughs) I want you to choose between Deep Blue Sea and Anaconda. <laughs> oh, because Derek. Why not? Why oh, not? Oh, Derek. Right? Yes. Right? I'm why okay not? with this. I'm all right with this. And I'm going to choose Anaconda just because it is so funny. Like, I had such a good time with that movie and laughed probably the entire way through it. Um, so, if you're ever feeling down, put on Anaconda. Yeah, that movie I feel like is enjoyable sometimes intentionally and sometimes unintentionally with the comedy. <laughs> so, and I just love the uh, yeah. There's some there's some uh, some good interactions in that movie. Uh, but yeah, I would. It's a tough one. I'm I'm curious what what does everyone else think about this? I'm thinking that it comes down to the two best deaths uh, in each movie, and Deep Blue Sea has the Samuel L. Jackson which is classic. Anaconda has the John Voight, uh, which is classic. Now, when John, when John Voight gets spit out and he winks, <laughs> <laughs> that's the winning, that's the winning point right there. So I'm team Anaconda Ooh. as well. Yeah. And you know, you can't beat out a movie with him, Jennifer Lopez and Ice Cube. Like, come on. Yeah. And I believe Owen Wilson in that too. Like an early Eric role for him. Stoltz. Oh my gosh. Stacked, baby. It's stacked. <laughs> it is a great cast. Great cast. They spared no expense. <laughs> That's a completely different movie, Derek. Um, so <laughs> part of me wants to lean towards Anaconda just because I do want to, like, I would want to keep in the world my memory of a character hitting hitting John Voight in the head with a golf club and saying <laughs> asshole in one. <laughs> But I think I'm going to have to personally lean towards Deep Blue Sea just because it's a movie that ultimately turns into a buddy comedy featuring Thomas Jane and LL Cool J. And you can't beat that in my book. So I'm going to have to go Deep Blue Sea. Mm. Excellent choices. What's the split right now? Uh, Deep Blue Sea lost before I even spoke. It's three to one. No, it's actually two to one. I haven't voted yet. Oh, you haven't? Oh, nope. I could have sworn you. I, I thought you were uh, <laughs> no, saying okay. your agreement with. Uh, it's two Annies, two Annies and a deep. <laughs> OK, I mean, I o- only remember watching these the first time. So it was like VHS or right on DVD when first DVD first came out, whatever the year was. Um, I haven't seen them since it was DVD. So I'm looking at it. Um, I haven't seen them since. I don't really remember them. I remember the casts. I remember. I mean, and I've seen plenty of GIFs and, and little video clips of Samuel Jackson getting eaten. Um, I'm going to go Deep Blue Sea. I feel like yes. I liked that movie better when I saw it. I w- yeah, so now we do have a tie, 2-2. Two, two. And uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because I love the cast of both of these movies. Like you mentioned, Scott, two iconic kills. But only one of them has a theme song sung by LL Cool J. Yes, sir. Having a head like a shark's fin. 
<laughs> and so that, for that reason, I'm going with Deep Blue Sea. I, I love our Deep logic for, for banishing movies forever. <laughs> hey, man, maybe if John Boyd had rapped, we'd be we'd be singing a different tune. <sighs> See, total like total lost uh, opportunity there. But Deep Blue Sea is just so much damn fun. And it really is an unpredictable movie. Like you cannot kind of like you said, it turns into Thomas Jane and LL Cool J, but you cannot really envision who's going to live or die in that movie. And they kind of throw everything out the window with the Samuel Jackson kill, but another great cast, Stellan Skarsgård, Michael Rappaport. I mean, Saffron Burroughs, there's, there's some talent in this and Rennie Harlan directing. So, I mean, it's, there's a lot going on there. And Derek, I, I, that, that does bring up the good point. Like everybody in terms of them kind of throwing the rules out the window, they, you know, a lot of people talk about the Samuel L. Jackson kill, but the fact that Saffron Burroughs dies at the end, I think, too, is is they, they pull the rug out from me under uh, again. Um, so, the, you know, they Rennie Harlan wasn't really he was really not pulling any punches in that movie. Um, and I, I appreciate that he toyed with expectations that way. Yeah. Now I just want to hear John Void rap. <laughs> My name is John Voigt and I'm here to say I'm on the boat and I'm going to get slayed. Yo. <laughs> oh, man. I think that should count as its own vote. Love it. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't add any extra white into there. If in case you're wondering that that is a hundred percent caucasity me. <laughs> That's unfiltered Drevet. Yeah. Always. White as the as pure as the driven snow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brian, we're moving on to you. Oh boy, I'm up. Okay, um, so um, I'm going to go with a uh, battle of the 1974 proto slashers, and this one's for everyone. And I'm going to go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Black Christmas. Oh. This is, oh, oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! Boy. This might be the real Sophie's choice. First Sophie's choice for me. I gotta think about this one. I, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll jump into this frying pan and say just for, I mean, Black Christmas. I love, and I feel like Bob Clark. The fact that he directed that movie and A Christmas Story is is mind blowing and one of the greatest things ever done in film, but you don't want to watch it ever again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, when you put it that way, I sound like an ass, but okay. (laughs) Um, I'll still have my red rider BB gun. So for that reason, because I know I can watch a Christmas story as weird as that sounds for justifying this, I'm going to go with the Texas chainsaw massacre. (laughs) Now I know what it is. Derek sounds like we're on shark tank. (laughs) And for that reason, I'm going to, I'm going to have to pass. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm, I may have borrowed from from that show from time to time. Uh, but it was bugging me the whole episode. I'm like, what? why does that sound so familiar? I like cheese, and for that reason, I'm a mouse. <laughs> I'm a Disney mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're asking me to pick between Leatherface, like one of the most iconic horror film characters of all time. And a character that we never fully see, although very creepy. I've got, I've got to go with Leatherface in that, in that instance. You got to, you got to think too. I think Scott's got the Canadian factor going. That's really. Well, that's what's tearing. That's that's it. It really is. It it truly is. Um, yeah. Oh, they're both masterpieces as far as I'm concerned. But if if I, if I have to pick one that I'm never going to watch again. Um, oh man. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to, because I think I'm going to be in the minority. I'm going to, I'm going to pick uh black Christmas cause I got to try to keep it alive. Yeah. Scott, I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you on that one, bud. Uh, yeah. it's like one of my favorites and this may not be a popular opinion, but I absolutely hate watching a Christmas story. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I thought you were going to say Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I thought she was going to say the same thing. I almost just, I hung up on, I almost hung up on the call. I'm like, I don't know you. Oh, he knows. He knows. 
He knows. I'm like, oh. you go watch that movie during the except, holidays on your own. Except with Jonathan, the call actually is coming from within the house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I love Black Christmas. Um, you know, Margot Kidder is one of my favorites. Um just anyway, so I have to pick that. And I don't find myself rewatching Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So sorry, anyone who does rewatch that a lot. <laughs> that is a good point, though, because that is a very stressful movie to watch because it is so there's so much anxiety in there. So that's something I didn't really think about, but I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> Yeah, that's totally fine. I think, you know, I got to see it on the big screen um, in Poughkeepsie. We did like a a film marathon. So I got to see Black Christmas on the big screen, which is amazing. Um, so it kind of it hits home. I don't think I've ever seen Texas Chainsaw on the big screen. So maybe that could be it. Maybe I need to watch it on the big screen. There. Mm. There you go. So what we got two Black Christmases and a Texas Chainsaw so far. Yeah, I'm going Texas Chainsaw. <gasps> it's not. It's not even close. Not even yeah, I mean, close, really. No, not even close. I mean, I I really like Black Christmas. I watch it every year. Have you no um, holiday cheer? I mean, <laughs> 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 I love that, Derek. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but but Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, it's, I like that we're talking about some of these like game changer movies and having to pick between them. But um, yeah, I mean this. This, this changed horror, you know, a lot of the movies that we're talking about, you know, I, there's there been so, with some of them, it's a rewatchability aspect, but, um, yeah, in this case, it's just like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is like too important to let go. <laughs> I must so, preserve this. Exactly. I must preserve <laughs> it. So my, my vote is to preserve it, but no, I really, I, I do like significantly like it better than, than Black Christmas. So what are we at? Two to two? Two to two. Yes. No pressure. So Black Christmas is probably a top 20 movie for me all time. I absolutely love it. There is no probably better get you into the spooky holiday season movie than Black Christmas. Uh, it set the standard and, you know, I don't think a movie has has topped it for that yet. Mm, but any, that. <laughs> anyone who has listened don't to my, my very... Heart. Anyone who has listened to my very first episode on this show, I did my top five, and in that top five was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It is an absolutely essential movie for me, um, and it has got probably the best ending to a movie I have ever seen in my life. Um, those that, that sequence with, with poor Sally in the back of that truck, covered in blood, laughing in a way that just shows that she is completely broken, is just so compelling, and then just cap it off with Leatherface doing that dance is just, you cannot beat that ending for me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And that poor trucker that just stumbled <laughs> into that. <laughs> I always feel so bad for him. Hey, he and got let's away. Let's not forget one of the greatest horror movie titles of all time. Mm-hmm. And, and it was true. almost called Head Cheese. So they, <laughs> they made a good pivot. Au revoir, uh, noir, uh, but no do, <laughs> do we all right, Scott, let's go. We gotta save Black hey, Christmas. This is all right. You still all right, Black Christmas is gone, but you still get Black Xmas as far as I know, right? Even though it's a remake. No, because no. if there's there's nothing no. to remake. There, but maybe they remake come up, it. Maybe they come up with the idea on their own. It's starting right? to disappear. Mm, you right? might be able to write it quickly and maybe mail mm. it to yourself or something. I'm not even <laughs> sure that would work. Some kind of like memento Wait. thing. Yeah. Time is weird, but yeah, start tattooing it to yourself. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> so, so really Black that was Christmas a... rankings is original. Uh, the one from this past Christmas and then Black Xmas. But if we're talking about eye gougings, Black Xmas at the top. <laughs> sure. It, just saying. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> there's too many. There's too many eye gougings. <laughs> But for more info on that, <laughs> listen to our Black Christmas episode where we dive into all three. We do. Yeah, we do. We did? <laughs> we did. Oh, sorry. We didn't invite you to that one, Scott. No, you couldn't make it to that one or something. We definitely okay. invited you. <laughs> no, there's, I mean, there's like an 80% chance I was there. It's just, I'm an ancient and. Uh, I don't think you were there. I think you couldn't make it for some reason. I have no hmm. idea. I really. 
It would be worse if I forgot you were on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've said that I, a few times. Were you there on that one? <laughs> you know what? It's just because I, in, in some cases, like I just always imagine all of you there. Or in this case, I'm imagining not there. Basically, Jonathan doesn't think of us as like separate people, but just random voices on the other end of a microphone. Right. It might be. It might all be in my head. Oh, so this is like an number. identity situation. <laughs> uh, and I can confirm, Scott, you were not on that episode. Get Ooh, out of the house Derek now. with a quick fact check. Apparently, I haven't listened <laughs> the, to it the either. Call, so. The call is not coming from inside the house. Yeah. It's not. You are safe. Uh, that was Tamika, Brian, myself, and Jonathan. Okay. So it looks like we can do it again. Yeah, yeah we could. We, we could. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> or just let that one exist and and don't stop the flow of life. Well, wow, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're closing things out at least for this round with me. Uh, I'm going to go with, because I'm curious to see what everybody thinks about this one. Maybe this is an obvious one, but Shaun of the Dead and Return of the Living Dead for anyone oh. who wants to talk about it. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll gladly kick this one off. Um, love Shaun of the Dead, uh, but I think I'm going to have to go with Return of the Living Dead. Um, it just got the... The new stuff that it brought to the zombie mythos is just, it can't be denied. Like the, the punk aesthetic, the punk attitude. Um, I really love how they incorporate the idea of kind of zombieism as addiction. You know, they, they need those brains. Otherwise, it's the only thing that makes the pain go away. Uh, so kind of like thinking of of being a zombie is like going through some kind of like deep seated withdrawal, uh, I think is a really interesting note. Um, and it just, it's, it's a really perfect blend of comedy and horror. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I don't think I got as much of the comedy from it. It just scared the crap out of me. Um, and so as years have gone on, it's, it's gotten funnier, um, but it hasn't lost any of its bite. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with uh, return of the living dead. This I'm is gonna, a oh go for it. Oh, thanks, Derek. Um, I'm gonna go with Shaun of the Dead, and I love um, I love them both, but I have to say Shaun of the Dead because I find myself watching that all the time and constantly breaking out an uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> Plus, I have a special place in my heart for Bill Nye, so. I think that's also why I like to go and rewatch it because he's amazing to me in everything that he's ever in. So I love that man dearly. Um, so, uh, yeah. So Shaun of the Dead's my pick for that one. This is really tough because I think both movies get better with repeat viewings. And as you notice, there's so many things to notice in each of them. There's so many great little details. And the fact that Dan O'Bannon was so instrumental in not only Alien, but also one of the greatest zombie movies all, of all time, I think is really amazing. That being said, I think I have to go with Shaun of the Dead as well, because it is it's just such a great horror comedy. It's not even my favorite of the Cornetto trilogy. I That would go to Hot Fuzz. I actually love Thank that movie. Thank you, Derek. Derek, yeah, I'm that, so with you on that. Like, oh, Hot Fuzz is such oh. an underrated movie. It is, it's a buddy cop movie and it's a slasher. Like, how can you not love that movie? Right, and it's like the whole town. It's the cult aspects of it. So, I actually, that's my favorite of the whole like Peg Wright Frost collaborations. But with Shaun of the Dead, I think it laid the groundwork for that. I feel like there's so much being said about zombies then that's still hilarious now, and about friendship and it's funny too because uh i'm kind of at that i think i'm around the age of like simon pegg's character was when they were doing that movie so what i saw it at the uh dr local draft house uh, like a year ago and it was just really interesting to watch it now as opposed to like when i was in high school and it was on like comedy central nonstop. uh so yeah it's, it's i think it holds up really well and it, it there's just so many funny things there to to digest as much as I love Return of the Living Dead, I saw it uh, in the theater when it came out, and my friends and I had a blast. I'm going to go Sean because Sean of the Dead has, I think, one of the most perfect comedy scripts um, that I've ever heard. 
in my life. It's so perfectly constructed. Uh, the film is beautifully uh, and humorously directed. The effects are great. The performances are winning and terrific. Um, it for me, it's Sean for sure. Scott, you spoke about Shaun of the Dead with like such love and warmth that I actually think I'm going to change my answer. No, because I was going to say Return of the. It doesn't matter. Oh. I think. You, I think. Um, oh, so everybody... you're just going to leave me here by myself like a jackass? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we'd be drawing dead anyway. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, Return of the Living Dead is is also a great movie, and I I might watch it more, but. Yeah, there's there, there's something, it, it is, I do think Shaun of the Dead, t- to your point, I do think it's a perfect movie. It's made with so much care and love, um, and, uh, and, and, and obviously that, that whole team, I mean, Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, um, you know, it, this, this kicked it off for them. So if I were to take this away from them, then there'd be no other movies because they'd disappear. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, 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 this is definitely... This is definitely going to be my pick, I think. Think, think about what you're doing, though, here. That we're not going to get any Return of the Living Dead movies now. No two, no three, no <laughs> great, great. I mean, I wrote the I wrote the, the class of in defense of, of Return of the Living Dead 2, and I still can be okay with my decision. I'll, I'll live with it. And 3 has actually seen a resurgence. Like, a lot of people have come around to 3. I'm not, I haven't mean, seen the same for Rage yeah, of the Grave good. yet, but it could happen. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> guess it doesn't uh, matter because it doesn't exist yep it doesn't yeah sean sean wins it okay so um we are circling around this is going to be our last round and uh so we're circling around and uh christy what is your last pair of movies so i i handpicked this one for you scott oh but but I think everyone, you know, if you've seen these, please do pick your favorite. So we're going with two Vincent Price um, classics. So it's going to be between The Mask of the Red Death okay. or Dr. Fibes Rises Again. Mm, I'm going to go Fibes. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to go Fibes. Uh <laughs> I don't know what there is to say. It's Dr. Fibes. He's one of the greatest uh, uh, villains uh, ever in uh, in movies uh, in a very traditional, old-fashioned sense, but yet cut through with this, like, early 70s dry, absurd humor. It's just... Uh, so, yeah. Easy yeah. peasy. There's so, nothing like it. So then I will... Uh, I'll be the um, the counter to that. Um, and there's two main reasons that I'm going to go with Mask of the Red Death. Uh, the first is it is an absolutely gorgeous set design. Uh, everything about the way like the palace is set up, uh, the different colored rooms is just absolutely gorgeous. The second reason is I have not seen Dr. Fribes Rises again, so I can only go by Mask of the Red Death. <laughs> Valid. And yes, the set designs are amazing on the Mask of the Red Dust. So that that's a great choice. And definitely check out Dr. Fives. Yeah, for sure. If you if you if you have seen the first one and liked it, you'll like the second one, too. Okay. Derek. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a tough one. (laughs) Hmm. I'm going to go Dr. Fives. Do you have a reason? (laughs) <laughs> well, I think it's the character and just the whole like atmosphere of it. It just seems like it's w- one of those. Uns- well, I guess it, it's people have come around on it with Vincent Price recently, but it, it feels like it might be just so unique for him. And it just, fe- I don't know, is this something different about it? Like he, I feel like he was able to do a little bit more with that role that he might not have been able to do with. Not that he got stereotyped necessarily, but just it was just a little bit different even for him. So for that reason, oh, gosh, I'm doing the freaking uh, Shark Tank. <laughs> for that oh, reason, yeah. <laughs> going with Dr. Vibes. No, no, I mean, that, that's a good, good pick and a good reason. I mean, I had mentioned this before, but I mean, Vibes was a, a career resurgence for, for Vincent Price. 
And uh, I mean, these movies were huge when they came up with the uh, the original and then the sequel we're talking about now. This was like the the saw of its time and definitely inspired it. Um, I can't say enough good things about both of these. And it also has Peter Cushing again. It has Robert Quarry. So yeah, Dr. Fibes gets my vote. Now, a quick question, Christy, why did you pick um, the sequel? And was there a reason why you picked the sequel and not the original? Yeah, actually, um, I have a really um, huge love of everything Egyptian. Uh, so okay, not to call myself an Egyptologist per se, but I have a bookshelf filled with um, different books about ancient Egypt and things like that. So I love the first one, but I really enjoy the sequel because of the Egyptian. Yeah setting you know what I mean so yeah. that really it grabbed me from like a, a historical standpoint in my mind gotcha yeah that's a good one um, yeah, and definitely, like I said, for, for our listeners, definitely uh, check out um, check out all those. I mean, Mask of the Red Death, I'm going to give a shout out to that because that's great as well. They have so many of these movies have now um, been put into Blu-ray collections, either from Scream Factory or, um, you know, if you're in the UK, from Arrow. So de- definitely worth a, a watch for sure. Um, okay, Scott, uh, we're going to turn it back to you, your last uh, pair of movies. You know what? Let's get a little bit of Fulci going. I think let's let's get messy in here a bit. Um, And this would be for anyone. So the beyond or one that's made quite a surge in popularity. um, The house by the cemetery. So for the gate, you go to the gates of hell trilogy and you don't even include my favorite one from the three. I just, I, I, and you know so, what? But and actually, you're, you're, you're doing me a favor because, yeah, there's no way I can lose this one. So you've yeah. done me a favor, Scott. That's I why appreciate I did it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to lose that either. <laughs> I can't get rid of the gates of hell. I didn't even, it wasn't even a thought. That's why I chose these two to battle it out. But where I'm, where I'm now stuck is that, to be perfectly honest, the Beyond and the House by the Cemetery kind of blur together for me. <laughs> um, which one is the one with the ridiculous uh, uh, spider attack sequence? That's the Beyond. Yep. Then keep the Beyond because that is just so insane that, like, th- that needs to stay in the world. So I will go with <laughs> <laughs> And I'll second that. I, w- I will go with the beyond as well. But I love that setting, too, and the whole, like, swamp vibe and everything. And it just feels a little bit, I mean, City of the Living Dead, you know, it, it definitely is a departure from that. So I would I would go with uh, I would go with the beyond. And I think it's just creepier in, in some ways, just with the uh, I don't know, there's just some really like you said, there's the spiders and I don't know, the whole swamp setting just kind of spooks me a little bit more. And uh, uh, one quick follow-up. I know I've made my choice, but which one has Bob in it? <laughs> well, Bob. Bob is housed by the cemetery. Then that only doubles down on my need for the, <laughs> the Beyond because that is some of the most annoying dubbing work I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've come around on the House by the Cemetery. I didn't really used to care for it much, um, and now I have a, a better appreciation of it. I actually think it's kind of a kind of a gas, um, but I'm going to go with the beyond. There's just too many um, seminal uh, Fulci moments and absurdity in it to uh, to to uh, not have it there. Yeah, it's the beyond for me. Um, in some cases, it may be more familiarity, but obviously I like the beyond better because I watch it a lot more. Um, I just saw it on the big screen. Um, for the first time, which was nice. We, we saw it at the drive-in. And, um, and yeah, that one's great. Uh, effects still hold up. Uh, maybe some of the best gore that we've seen in, uh, in, in Fulgi's filmography. I mean, feel free to, to argue. I don't, I don't think it's definitive. I love Zombie, um, you know, and I, and I love plenty of others. But uh, th- there's just, there's, I guess there's a nice mix here. Um, even from the very beginning, we got the guy that gets gets crucified. We just talked about the spider attack. Um yeah, I, I, I like this one a lot. Um, I don't know. 
you know, I don't know if he, he felt more comfortable with the story or if it was the setting. Um, there's something about this that to me feels like it merges a little more with both, um, you know, Italian and American cinema. And maybe that is why I like it a little bit, bit better because maybe it's easier to get into. Um, but anyway, uh, I digress and it's my pick. Yeah, I'm going to also go with The Beyond. Um, did we all just agree on the same film choice? Yeah, I was going to say, is first for us? This is our first unanimous yeah. decision. I think it might be. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. It's beautiful. World peace achieved. That's right. <laughs> I'm Kumbaya. sure this will be that will be the case on everything moving forward with our it picks. Will. <laughs> Derek, you're up with your last pair of movies. Oh boy. So I'm looking at my notes here trying to figure out which bomb to drop. And oh screw it. I'll go with the big dogs. Okay. So you have to choose between John Carpenter's Halloween or Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street. Keep in mind, you're basically choosing between the two franchises as well. Oh, Derek, so I, yeah. Uh-oh. Nightmare on Elm Street, for sure, 100%. Absolutely. I so, could get rid of every Halloween movie and be okay with it. Oh! <laughs> now, I'll second, I'll second the choice without the derision of Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, wow. You know, Halloween is amazing. Um, you know, if, if we got to get rid of the franchises, I'm going to very much miss Halloween 3. Um, but in terms of innovative horror that just kind of changed the game, you just can't beat Nightmare on Elm Street. It just did such wild, amazing things with the subgenre. Um, and it's one that just never will never get old. Um, you know, Halloween is one where as much as I love it, as much as I love the atmosphere, if I just kept watching that one over and over again, like I can see it getting repetitive. Uh, I can't see that happening with Nightmare on Elm Street. And I will also say that, like, I am a fan of every single installment of that franchise. Now, some of them I am a fan of in different ways while acknowledging that they're kind of crap, but I still get a kick out of them. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Christy. I'm going to go nightmare on Elm street. Oh yeah. Now we're assuming that everything is erased. If we erase one, but we're only talking about the originals here. Cause I can't think about, my future. <laughs> so I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Halloween. Uh, obviously, uh, for me, uh, you know, I was eight and I saw it in the theater and, uh, it made me an instant John Carpenter, um, fan for life. So yeah, that would, that one's an, as much as I love Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, which again, I saw in the theater and that was like, holy shit, this is, some great stuff that we hadn't seen in a while. Uh, but I got to go Halloween. Excellent choice. Uh, Excellent. Choice. I don't know where I'm going with this. What, what's the, what's the split right now? Two to one. Uh, yep. Nightmare. Oh man. So y- if we think about this from a franchise level, I think the nightmare on Elm street franchise is stronger and I would rather watch a lot of those installments But if we look just at the first ones, and I understand that I would undo the franchise anyway, but I'm going to go with, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. And I will say, if we we really want to stick to the the spirit of this, we should be looking at it in just the the movies themselves, Um, which I would still still be saying Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, Halloween. (laughs) <laughs> I could have sworn I heard a little demon voice. <laughs> oh. I'm sure it was just an angel. Flappy, uh, flappy, flappy. flappy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no this pressure. Is, this is, it's weird that this has been. This is, might be the toughest one. <laughs> the repercussions oh. part is. It's hard to even ignore. if I skip that part though. If I skip oh. the franchise part mm-hmm. and I'm just looking at it, just as two movies. Just two movies, two movies, looking at a boy, <laughs> wanting him to accept her. <laughs> Which movie it's, has the better final shot? If we're not <laughs> oh, don't go by that. <laughs> I, I had to think of the one thing that might be able to sway that's this. Good, that's not. <laughs> oh, 
That is amazing. So it's uh, it's gonna be. Uh, uh, no, we got time. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I can on Halloween. My vote. I can I can cast my vote, and you can have some more time to think about it. No, because I want it. Because I want to know that my vote counts. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm drawing dead because you pick nightmare, then I'll just be like, oh, whatever. Um, <laughs> And I want your vote to count if I split this. And that's not why I'm voting this way, because I've already made up my mind. It's Halloween. <laughs> it's definitely Halloween. It's it's oh. too influential. Even if it's even if re- regardless of how it impacted the industry, which to me is also a big piece of it. Also personally, I watch it more often. I like the Nightmare franchise, but I think I prefer three, four, five over one, two. Oh, interesting. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So. Respect. Mm. Respect. Anyway, that's, that's my pick. We've gone from that kumbaya moment with the uh, the last round to, to a podcast divided. <laughs> yeah, this I Derek. was just going to say a house divided. I know where, I know where Derek's going to go. <laughs> well, Derek, it's all on you. I am that uh, oh, crazy Mr. person <laughs> who actually enjoys the Halloween franchise pretty much through and through uh from the first one to dangertainment and beyond uh i love i i just love that it takes place on halloween now granted nightmare on elm street also had a huge impact on me kind of convinced me to start drinking coffee i think that first one is probably one of the most if not the most imaginative and unsettling horror movie ever made but I got to go with I got to go with Sam Hain on this one and say Halloween. So, I think Welcome, what Derek. really what really hurts about this one is that he picked it in part because of resurrection <laughs> and that <laughs> really stings. <laughs> That's all right. You still get scream, you'll get more craven goodness. Yeah, but see, there you go, right? This if is if someone brings up a scream, it's win-win for for Mr. Craven. I don't yeah. know cuz like unless it's... he doesn't make he doesn't make scream because he didn't make nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, he <laughs> no, didn't no, get no, sick no. of you can't get sick of slashers. <laughs> you can't butterfly your way over to different franchises now. I Come don't on. know. I think that's a pretty good argument cuz especially cuz he never makes new nightmare, which is the warm up for oh. him to make scream. <laughs> yeah, this this I feel this There's some wrong. doctor who stuff <laughs> for you. Because then that's, this means no Kruger, like no iconic Freddy Krueger. You could have you could have sent this the other yep. direction, Derek. Yep, but we've got Instead, we've, we've got Buster Rhymes who can't act his way out of a paper bag. Thanks a lot, Derek. And <laughs> give it a rewatch. Yeah, I'm responsible for this decision too. <laughs> I'm I'm sad about it. Uh, um, okay, Brian, I think I'm going to save you for last because your reply inspired this. So I'm going to going to have you close us out. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you last. <laughs> I died. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you close this out, but I'm going to, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the line and I, I will say, um, evil dead two or cabin in the woods. Oh, oh wow. This is the, kind of one of the first picks wow. where we've, we've had decades in between, uh, the, the release dates because mostly we've stuck within a year or two of releases or I guess, you know, five or 10 years, but <laughs> interesting. Uh, honestly, this one isn't too hard for me, so I'll go first. Um, I'm going to go Evil Dead too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I I dig Cabin in the Woods. Uh, it's it's a great kind of meta horror. It kind of def- it was kind of the definitive meta horror movie. Um, you know, and some people kind of say it it hit, it almost ruined horror for a little while. I don't know if I agree with that, but just because it like it hit the nail on the head so hard, it, a lot of people say it was hard for people to figure out like, okay, where do we take it from here? Um, I don't know if I would take it that far, but it was certainly entertaining. I loved what they did with, with the, uh, the meta conversation, but evil dead two is just so thoroughly entertaining. It is just distilled horror fun. Like everything, there's not a wasted minute in evil dead two. Everything is just designed to kind of like keep you enthralled. Uh, so yeah, I, I have to go with evil dead two on this one. Yeah, this is a tough decision because on the one hand, you do have a movie that is probably one of the top five or just one of the most innovative and self-aware movies ever made that really did, like you said, turn the genre inside out. 
and and I loved everything about Cabin in the Woods. I love the twists, like the bonkers elevator scene, how that it just it's like a choose your own adventure book. And there's so many different ways that could have gone. But I think I'm going to have to go Evil Dead 2 as well, because I think it, it sets the standard for horror comedy and it's influenced so many filmmakers and so many movies since its release that its imprint on the genre is undeniable and it shot Bruce Campbell into horror royalty. Uh, so yeah, I got to go with evil dead two on this one as well. Yeah. I'm going to have to agree with, um, the two of you for the exact same reasons. And I love cabin in the woods as well. Um, but yeah, evil dead too. Cause like you said, it's at the stage. So that's my pick. I'm going to go Evil Dead 2 as well, uh, but for different reasons. Again, because I'm old, I love Cabin in the Woods, but the nighttime scene, some of them outside, too dark. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I can't see what's going on. So I love your reasoning. Just <laughs> turn up the bulb a little bit or whatever. It's a little too dark. Um, so, so for that reason... I'm in with Evil I, Dead too. I will say a little interesting that, you know, the guy who can't stand the loud noises and screaming from other movies is going to lean into Evil Dead 2, which is kind of nothing but loud noises and screaming for most of its runtime. That's true. Then that's a good point. So um, the, if I watch Evil Dead 2 today, would I have the same reaction as to when I originally saw it? I'm going to still say yes. Evil Dead 2 is uh it's just too warm and snuggly and <laughs> and and it, it wants you to love it and you have no choice to <laughs> and for those keeping track at home turn down the volume on maximum overdrive turn up the lights on cabin in the woods <laughs> thank you <laughs> easy fixes. that's all i ask yeah it's it's <laughs> i think we're, we're all evil dead too right so yeah it's it's, it's <gasps> everybody evil dead too nice so I had a that, feeling that just we'd wasn't go that fair way, to Cabin in the Woods. That just wasn't I, I, that, fair. That's why when I picked it, I was looking at it at the end. I'm like, oh, I'm going to give Brian this one because I think I'm picking on Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> um, but it, but we still, well, we don't love you anymore because you're gone from our brains. We can never watch you again. You might as well uh, put neither Leap Fist in there and, and say that or uh, Evil Dead 2. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but no, I thought, I thought Cabin in the Woods might have a shot. I thought maybe I'd get Derek with it or Christy, but no, no, it's... Uh, no love. So uh, that, that brings us to nearly the end. Um, Brian, your your last two picks and uh, and close us out. What do you got? All right. So I was going to do one just to torture you, Jonathan. But I think if we're going to end on this one, I think I've got one that's going to create some better discussion uh, because it's two movies that are from the same franchise but have very different sensibilities. And I'm going to go with Sleepaway Camp. Or Sleepaway Camp 2. Ooh. Mm -hmm. The first oh, so we're turning the franchise against itself. Mm -hmm. And also because I reject the premise that, like, if you get rid of one, the whole franchise is going to go because that was introduced halfway through this episode. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's Let not like if you sketch. get rid of, it's not like if you get rid of Sleepaway Camp, you lose Sleepaway Camp too as well. Uh, this is just You a, won't a know until we pick it. It's a, <laughs> it could create a paradox. <laughs> Everything could end the the world, the universe. This you could be no our last episode. What you're, yeah, you have no idea what you've just done, Brian. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're ending with this one then. You have awakened the grumpy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay. gosh, this is tough. This is tougher than I would expect because I you really know, do love the sequels. You know, it's funny because I like the sequels as well. But for Sleepaway Camp, I really watched the original, like the first one, not the original, but the first one a lot more than the others. And I always like I just enjoy the story and how it's done. So I think I would just have to pick the first Sleepaway Camp. I'm going to go with Christy as well. Um, I'm not a big fan of the sequels necessarily, but the original is so damn weird and strange and um really icky um early on uh with some very questionable 
characters. I, I'm not talking about Angela. I'm talking about uh, the cook. Uh, so it's kind of gross and kind of nasty, but it's weird. It's a weird movie. Um, and it just can't be denied. It's it's a real, it's a one and done kind of movie, I think. It's, it's, uh, it's very different. Yeah, and I think it gets you in all the like emotional areas that it wants to, you know, with the icky characters. So I totally agree with that. Boy. And so either way though, teenage wasteland exists no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why not? (laughs) I'll allow it. Just tell me it will be safe. Okay. I, Oh, I think I'm actually going to go with Sleepaway camp Two, because as weird as the first one gets, I feel like Sleepaway camp Two dove headfirst into some of the more bizarre moments from the first one and just said, we're going to make that the entire movie. We're going to have Pamela Springsteen as now I I do believe like it would have been awesome to see Felissa Rose in those. And, uh, you know, we we do get to thankfully there's that fourth movie. So I will say I'm not I I don't want to spoil anything, but go and watch the fourth one. But Pamela Springsteen, uh, I thought was so like just I don't know, just bonkers, but like seemed like she was having a great time in that role and the kills in that in, in those two sequels, two and three, I think are just really fun and, and just bizarre and increasingly one upping themselves. So it, it's, it's kind of crazy, but I guess I'm going to say two, which I feel weird even saying that, but here I am. And Derek, one point of clarification I do need to make. Um, the the one I think you're referring to, Return to Sleepaway Camp, is actually the fifth one. There is oh, right. a really – right. I haven't seen it, but from what I've heard, there is a really, really, really horrible fourth one called The Survivor, which the way I've heard it described is basically a clip show of part two and three because most of it – isn't new it's like 30 percent new footage and the rest of it is just recapping what happened in the the last two films i'm told it's pretty unwatchable um so yeah don't don't look for the fourth one if if you're looking for the one with felissa rose's return uh go straight to return to sleepaway camp that sounds that's some uh silent night deadly night uh two shenanigans going on over there (laughs) i'm kind of curious about that now yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think they're able to finish that one. So, but yeah, that uh, actually Return to Sleepaway Camp does have one of my favorite uh, horror movie kills like ever. So, just a side note. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to prevent this paradox, and also because I really do believe that this is this is my favorite of the two. I'm going with the first Sleepaway Camp. Uh, this was for me. This was like. Um, this was a hidden gem. I didn't see the first Sleepaway Camp, and I didn't know the ending until late 20s I saw it, which I'm, I'm surprised it escaped me for so long because I saw the VHS cover for all three of them, I guess, and I never picked it up. I guess it's because I was always like, well, you know, especially there's the one where she's got like the the, the hockey mask, you know, what is that on the Sleepaway Camp 2, like poster and, and VHS. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I could just go with the Friday the 13th instead. So when I was when I was a little kid at the uh, video store, I always opted out of, of picking that up. And I made a big mistake, but it was such a pleasant surprise because I had seen, you know, so many horror movies and so many slasher movies at the time to be like, OK, well, I'm finally going to try Sleepaway Camp and then just falling in love with it. So, uh, you know, and I do love the mystery aspects of that one that are obviously taken away from from two and three. Two and three are a lot of fun. So like this is I I enjoy watching all three of them, but I'm giving my vote to the first one. So uh, I guess this doesn't mean anything anymore. Thanks, Jonathan. But um, I'm (laughs) I'm going to go to and I've had a kind of like a a long journey with two, uh, starting with when I was a little kid, I actually picked up part two because of that box with the hockey mask and the, the Freddy glove coming out of Angela's backpack. Actually, now that I think of it, the cover, it's not even Angela. It's just some random woman. No, it's somebody (laughs) else. Yeah. Which is, which is so strange now. So I remember as a little kid being very disappointed that you know, Freddie and Jason weren't actually anywhere to be seen. Um, I didn't understand how copyright, <laughs> how copyright law worked back then. So of course they're not going to be in it. Um, but, um, 
having seen it as an adult, it's one that I wind up going back to so much because it's just so much fun. And it's just so like playful and a a weird combination of both playful and really mean. Like she kills literally everyone at this camp by the end of the movie. Nobody survives this thing. Um, So and the, the first one, I appreciate it for how weird it is. Uh, I'm actually going to take a, a slight page out of Scott's book and say, for me, it's a little too loud. Like, I feel like every line of dialogue in this script must have ended with an exclamation point because mm-hmm. everybody <laughs> screams it. Everybody is so angry in that movie. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do appreciate the original for how weird it is, but it just part two is just pure comfort food. It is a, mm-hmm. a, a warm snuggly blanket for me. Um, and so, yeah, I, I got to say too, a warm bloody blanket. Yep. <laughs> well, I feel a little bit better because yeah, I feel, I felt, uh, like maybe I was just going to be on an Island, but now we're both stranded. So there <laughs> <laughs> stranded with, with, with no more, well, no, you, you get them all. You actually, you you kind of get what you want, oh, right? No, we removed. No, do we remove two? No, we removed two. Sorry, we removed it. Never mind. You don't get what you want. We still get good. hocus pocus. Yeah, you get hocus pocus. <laughs> 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 okay, and with that, another episode of Corpse Club comes to an end. I want to thank our special guest Christy for joining us. Yay, Christy! Um, Yay. Yeah, yes. it's been great to have her. Oh, it was great joining. Thank you. Yeah, so it's been great to have her because, you know, I'll mention Christy a lot on the podcast. Um, so Christy is, is my wife, as some of you know our listeners may know, and obviously all the co-hosts know. She's not my secret wife. Um, but um, Christy's also a big part of Daily Dead behind the scenes. It's very, you know, very much a fact that Daily Dead wouldn't exist without her. So always thank her for that. But she also helps us behind the scenes. She helps with events. She's uh, been there selling T-shirts if you've gone to any of the conventions we've been at in the past. So um, she is a, a big part of this Daily Dead crew. Um, I also want to thank Brian, our engineer, for helping us out each and every episode. And as always, we want to thank our listeners, including those of you who have signed up for a Corpse Club membership. Make sure to visit corpseclub.com to check out our episode backlog. You can also sign up to become a member, which will give you special benefits, including we have a Corpse Club pin, t-shirt, and you can pick an episode topic. Don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Every rating and review helps. You can also find us on Google Play, SoundCloud, and all of your favorite podcast providers. If you want to get in touch, you can reach out anytime. We're at contactacorpseclub.com or on Twitter. We're at Daily Dead News and we're at Corpse Club. And on Instagram and Facebook, we're under Corpse Club as well. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, stay scary. Thank you.